this channel is going to be a hundred percent transparent like all the way across the board a lot of guys comment on my channel they see that i put rookie in my titles but i'm a rookie owner operator i'm not a rookie truck driver i've had my cdl since i was 18 years old and i've been driving since i've been 18 years old so i've had my cdl now about seven eight years so i'm not a rookie truck driver i'm just a rookie owner operator but transitioning from company to an owner operator is a hell of a transition so i mean i get it and that's why a lot of things i'm still learning as i go but i figure if i'm learning it and i got a a, a platform that i can post it on so that someone else can learn it that's even better or even if it's a truck driver or somebody who's been driving for years and they, they pretty much know how much things cost. Me just putting certain receipts up, I mean, that could even be informative to you because maybe you can look at my receipt and say, damn, you paid this and that much for, for it. And up here where I live, we only pay this much. You know what I'm saying? So it could still be some type of informative or just entertaining content. So that's the purpose of my channel. If you're someone who don't like information or you feel like, you know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't want that information to be put out. This may not be the channel for you because I'm going to always be transparent with my viewers and my subscribers. Just because even before, like when I was a company driver, I always wish I had a, a, a channel, a YouTube channel that I can go on and kind of like get the ropes to certain things, just like how you do it, how you, how you, how you, go about doing certain things with trucking or just in general and some information is literally just not there and we all do it like we all go to youtube and we ask information or we ask questions on how to do certain things you know what i'm saying but i just wanted to put that out there i just wanted to, to put that clip in this video just to let you all know that as i learn as i go through things as i pay for things I'll let y'all know like what happened, how it happened, and then what I pay. I think that's the most important part so that you can kind of get an idea on uh, what the cost is like of being an owner operator. Like forget all of the, oh, I make this, I make that. You know, let's talk about that too. But then let's also talk about how much it, it really costs. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't just throw information out there without putting everything out there. So this channel will just be a channel where I will be posting it all, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know what I'm saying, the good checks, I may post even some some smaller checks, you know, and not every week, I'm gonna have a fat check, there's weeks things gonna happen, so I feel like why not just be transparent about everything, you know what I'm saying, there's not many people who are gonna be transparent, and I appreciate all my supporters, all of the followers and the subscribers, the likes and everything, I appreciate it all. here i kind of want to go over a few of the sacrifices i had to make to get in this position to be able to get my own truck it was not an overnight process i know a lot of my videos if you just hit me for the first time it looks like i just woke up one day and i just went and got a truck and just now my own operator it was everything but that i got my cdl at 18 years old and i've been grinding hard since 18 years old with my cdl just working hustling i've been a company driver of course but I always wanted to be an owner operator, so I put myself in position. It took me up from 18 up until now to be able to finally save up and make sacrifices to get where I am today. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over the sacrifices, the main five sacrifices I had to make, which allowed me to get in this situation, go to Long Mountain and get my semi truck. So let's get into the video. So when I say sacrifices, I mean, I don't mean it in a bad way. I just mean all of these things I had to do right here is things that I had to do for today that was gonna put me in a better situation tomorrow and then thereafter so I feel like all of these things was 100% worth me doing that I necessarily want to do them at the time absolutely not but I knew for me I had a brighter future and I had a, a better vision for myself so the number one thing I had to do to get me on this path is leaving my local job for me, that was probably the hardest part of the entire process. That was harder than taking a leap and going to Lone Mountain and leasing on and jumping into unfamiliar territory. I feel like the hardest part was leaving my local job 
And that part was so hard for me because I was at my local job for five years, real small company. And I mean, the people loved me and I love them people. It's like, it ain't nothing that I could wish for that they didn't do for me. You know what I mean? So it was deeper than just me working for them. I actually had like a genuine relationship with everybody I worked with. Like I said, it was like a real small mom and pop type of company. I was the only driver. So for me to just wake up one day, you know what I'm saying? And tell myself, hey, Kayvon, you're going to have to leave this place. If you want to get your own equipment and do your own thing, you're going to have to leave this place. So that was the number one thing that was probably the biggest sacrifice I made in this. Just leaving a situation where I was 100% comfortable, 100% content, and jumping into a whole different world of trucking. <laughs> Step number two on what I did to put myself in this situation today is I literally had to live off of nothing. Like I was getting paid, and like I said, my checks was every two week paychecks and I was paying rent, paying lights, water, phone bill, all my bills with the first check. And then with the second check, I will try to survive off of like 450 for the two weeks and then stack the rest up to try to get this truck. Now as you can imagine, that was miserable. That was living of Vienna sausages and noodles. So that right there was a challenge in itself, but I knew that I needed to save money. It took me a lot longer being at my company that I was so complacent with to get to where I am today. I was comfortable, but I was, I was at a dead end. So my number three sacrifice, guys, it will have to be this one right here it, it, it hit me hard as well i don't think it hit me as hard as having to leave my company but it definitely hit me hard but this was a step i had to take i tried to do it without making this move but it just wasn't working out especially as quick as i wanted it to so i told myself my lease was up in my apartment i knew that if i wasn't paying 1350 in rent i'll be able to stack this money a lot quicker because that first check Remember that first check I was paying my rent with. So I figured that first check I'll be able to save a lot of, and then the second check I'm now able to save as well, a lot of. So I wouldn't have to keep surviving off a little little to nothing. So number three, I moved back in with my family. Just for a temporary phase, just to get myself where I really wanted to be, to stack my bread up, to get my own equipment. It wasn't a step I really wanted to take, but I will say that was a key step to allowing me to become a little bit more financially free and be able to stack the money that I needed to get this truck. All right, guys, so number four would be me being back home, being able to stack money. But now I ran into an issue of seeing my money. So now I feel like I don't have as many bills and as many responsibilities. So my checks started to show. So now I'm starting to have thousands of dollars in my account. You know what I'm saying? After saving. So now I found myself spending more out on food and spending more out in gas because now I'm riding around more and spending money out um, at the mall. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing my money now. I don't got rent. So at some point I had lost the sight on what I really moved back in for. So I moved back in. And I kind of was here a little bit longer than I should have been. So I, like two, three months in of living here, but I kind of got back on track. Got my head back right and focused on the bigger picture, which was starting my own business as an owner operator. And the very last sacrifice I think I made was probably the easiest, because now we're talking about me being all the way down there at the finish line. That was finding the best place to get my truck from. So a lot of people, owner operators or just truck drivers in general, got so much to say about where you get your truck from, what color your truck needs to be, whether it's a manual, whether it's a day cab, whether it's a 2020 or a 2002. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's got so many different ways they feel like you should do whatever it is that you wanna do. But I kinda had to do my own due diligence, do my own research, and go for what I know. It really was all boiled down to Lone Mountain, LRM leasing, and SFI. A lot of people ask me why I didn't go through SFI. SFI 
no, I ain't knocking nobody who went through SFI. Shout out to everybody who got trucks. Like for me, SFI wouldn't have worked because their payments was 12, 1300 every month. For me, I ain't want to pay $4,000 a month for a truck. Now granted, their trucks were brand new. That budget going a lot shorter with trying to pay $4,000 a month. I feel like I can realistically pay $1,500 a month for a truck and be comfortable. I'm pretty sure the guys over at SFI, they, they can do it, but I don't know how comfortable they are with doing it. So, and then with LRM leasing, that was number two. That was why I was gonna go number two, but I felt like a lot of their reviews was hit or miss. So, ultimately, Long Mountain is who I decided to go through. I think they got more skin in the game. And I seen a lot of more people doing positive reviews on Long Mountain than I did with any other truck leasing type of situation. So that right there was just a few of the things I sacrificed when trying to get where I am today with being able to go get my own truck and do my own thing as an owner operator. I kind of wanted to make this video because for some reason I kind of been feeling like a little bad about my videos. Just not my videos, but the image my videos could be putting out there. A lot of people have also been making the comments to me letting me know, hey, look, um, I feel like YouTubers are the problem with how trucking is right now. So, and I can kind of understand it to an extent. So I just wanted to put this message out there. Like me becoming an owner operator wasn't an overnight process. A lot of guys come on my videos and they say, hey, could I just go get a truck and be, do what you're doing? I don't recommend it. You know what I'm saying? To each his own, but I'm not pushing for anybody to go get a truck. I'm not pushing for anybody to do their own thing. You know what I'm saying? As an owner operator. Now, if you're ready, that's totally different. But just because you see this video or my check video or my Lone Mountain leasing video, it wasn't that easy. It didn't happen overnight like that. I would highly recommend you at least go to a carrier, whether that's Swift, Snyder, Western, whatever, and just get at least a year to two years experience before even contemplating being an owner operator. I feel like you should do that. Learn the business first, learn the company side of it, and just see if trucking is even for you. Cause trucking is not one of those things where you can just wake up and do it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like a lifestyle. And if it's not something that is really for you or something that you really can see yourself doing, I 100% would not recommend you come in today and then go get a truck tomorrow. I just wouldn't recommend it. But it's your boy Chuck and Transparency or KB, whatever you want to call me. Again, y'all, if y'all have any questions, I'm gonna drop my email down. I probably put it right here on the screen, Baskerville Kevon at Yahoo. Y'all can write me, y'all can ask me any questions, hit me up for trucking reasons only. Don't just be trying to chat. And again, yeah, I'm trying to get on to a routine on when I need to post. Y'all can also let me know like what would be the best days to post, like the end of the week, the beginning of the week. Should I post on weekends? I'm just trying to like get a better routine on posting these videos. Again, y'all, thanks for all the likes, comments. The subscribers, all my new subscribers. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Chuck and Transparency World. Well, we do not hide. I'm not one of those people, you know what I'm saying? They, you see them in the comments like, oh, inbox me, inbox me. I'll inbox you know. I'm a, you ask me something, I'm gonna put it in the comment section. You know what I'm saying? It's just because we're gonna try to be transparent here. You know what I'm saying? If it's trucking related and if I know it, drop it in the comment section. I'm accident in the comment section. Now, if you got something that's more private or a longer question or something like that you wanna ask me, then email me. But again, y'all, it's Trucker Transparency. I'm out.